everybody. Hi and welcome to Picking Brains podcast. My name is Charlie and today we have with us Saz, Aiden and Dan Brownlee from the UK uh, Haunters documentary, which is coming out this September. Um, just a quick rundown and introduction if you don't know what that is. The UK Haunters uh, is a vlog style documentary that uh, takes us into the UK haunt scene or as uh, people like to call it here, the scare industry, the scare acting here. Uh, and he goes around different attractions and really gets into it, explains it, you know, shares it to the world. Um, do you reckon that is a pretty good summary of how it is? Yeah, yeah, spot on. Cool, awesome. So tell us about this film, you know, what can we expect from it? Um, oh, it's very experimental, yeah. I think is the best way to put it. It's, I did a film in the London Tombs. Yeah. Um, and the London Tombs themselves are amazing, but the production company behind it were a bit of a pain in the arse. So I had a lot of frustration of not getting artistically what I wanted from it. Yeah. So when I did the documentary, which was done by me, and no one told us to, bar me and possibly my wife who helped produce it, I just just threw everything artistically I wanted at it. And if it didn't work, I didn't care because I wanted to try. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting as the documentary went on, it kind of evolved and became an almost found footage style documentary. But yeah. that was part of the process was just to throw things at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah, that's that's pretty damn cool. Um, you said it uh, evolved. Like, did you have an idea at the start of how it was going to go? Like, did you think we're going to have this is what's going to be at the final product? Or did you just kind of go into it? I, I just went into it. The thing is, I was chatting to... Uh, Andy Cookie Rawlings, if you know who he is. Um, uh, very, he's best known as Cookie, is his character. I think I've heard face, of him, yeah. Got, yeah, uh, he worked at the Tombs. Mm. And I was saying, he's the one who told me about the UK horn scene. I didn't know it existed. Oh, wow. Now, I was 41, I think, when I started doing this, 43 now. Yeah. And um, I was just like, how the hell did I not know this existed? I've been a lifelong horror fan. So mm. I thought, well, if I don't know, there must be millions of other me's out there who also don't know, mm. and they need to be aware that this is going on on their doorsteps and get involved. And I had a meeting with him and said, right, here's an idea. I kind of want you at the base of it. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of want to just explore it. What do you think? And he was like, yeah, it's a good idea. He said, look, don't tell anyone yet. Let me just get my head round it and you know, figure out what I'm going to do. And then when I got home, he put a group message to all the heavy hitters in the UK. <laughs> he went, this is Dan. He's in the documentary. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, the gauntlet had been laid and I had to pick it up. So it just wow. kind of went from there. That's cool, though. It's good that you uh, managed to get those uh, contacts uh, quite uh, early on then, I suppose. Um, yeah. So how come you like decided to focus it around Andy? Was it because, you know, he was the person who introduced you to it? He was a person who introduced me to it, and he's the one who lay on the line. So he, yeah. this documentary, it's, I didn't know about any of these until I started it. So it is, the way he lay on the line for me is kind of his part through the documentary. So his part is kind of how he's explaining it to me. And then the journey I go on is my journey. So it's kind of the two ways I discovered the UK haunt slash scare scene. Yeah. That, that's, that's pretty damn cool then um so you you say it's um looking into it delving into it and how you discovered it what do you want people to take from it like when they end up finishing watching it what do you want them to feel think i want them to think that the uk's horn scene is just as good as americans yeah that's the thing everyone goes oh america 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 and i was like have you seen what the uk has to offer because unless you're in the niche scene which is pretty big once you're mm. in it. So if you, but if you're not in it, you don't know it's there. And everyone bangs on about America. And I was like, <laughs> hang on, hang on. England's kicking ass. Mm. The world just doesn't know about it. Yeah. So yeah. That, I mean, was that, was, was that your main motivation then for making the documentary to make sure that everybody knew about it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, one of the, um, the criticisms, because I read criticisms as well as um, praises for the documentary, is that someone said, I didn't delve in deep enough because I was like a child showing off their new toy. Mm. And I was like, but that's literally what was happening. 
That's fair. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't go too deep because I was. Just, it's not like I knew about it. Went. Hmm. I should pick into this and that. Each horn I went to, or scare attraction I went to, I learned everything about it then and there. Yeah. So how I, many attractions? I didn't have time to pre-plan anything. It literally just organically yeah. evolved. How many attractions did you go to to make the film? Oh, attractions I went to. I didn't go to many attractions. I went to Broadwich Farm yeah. and Z Events. But yeah. what I yeah. wanted to do is I wanted to cover as much as possible. So I did an attraction, which was an old school style horn. Then I went to Z Events, which was an amalgamation of escape room mm-hmm. and scare attraction. Then I went to Faces Adventures, which was the immersive theatre yeah. Slash extreme. Yeah. Then I did makeup artists, composers. I just kind of wanted to get. A, I didn't want to just do haunts. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to say, look, this is all the talent behind it. I didn't want to say because it's kind of like the haunts is the end result. Yeah. I wanted to show the brains, the makeup, the composer. I wanted to show everything, all the building blocks behind yeah. what, what creates these attractions. Yeah, so I, I suppose it's like a, a an introduction uh, kind of to it, you know, um, and it, it's it's cool to see someone taking you behind the scenes of it all going, you know, mm. I guess the, the audience um, is that go through and just see like, oh, I'm here to get scared, but, you know, they don't yeah. see everything that goes on behind the yeah. scenes, which is really cool, which is why I'm quite excited to see it, because... I mean, I know how we work behind the scenes, but I'd love to see how other people work behind the scenes. You know, what process do they take? So I'm sure it's going to be exciting, not just for people in the scare industry, but obviously people outside of it as well, learning this mm. whole new thing, which would be really awesome. Yeah. Um, so, out of interest, oh, sorry, oh, no, sorry, go, go go. <laughs> I know you've seen a lot of like, from like the scare acting to the lighting. Is there any job that you'd possibly like to do uh, to do with the scare acting industry, out of interest. Yes, I would love, 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 love to design a horn. Oh, I'm yeah. actually doing my first very modest home horn this year. Um, I've started making the tombstones, which are gigantic and absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, I saw yeah. on your Facebook. Love to design a horn. That that's my that's my thing. That's so so cool. But yeah, yeah, I'd I'd love to do that as well, just at some point. But yeah, I suppose now you've seen behind the scenes of it all, you've got like an idea of how to go into it, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, carry on, carry on. It's cool. But I say yeah, it's, it's not going to be any near as good as anyone in the documentary. It, it's very kind of throwing a party, but I'm I'm putting animatronics places so people can step on something, somebody's going to scream at them. Then nice. the front of the guard moving to piss off the neighbours because we did on on the actual lockdown. <laughs> yeah, we did a lockdown Halloween. Where we oh, decorate nice. the front yard as Halloween and had yeah. a little trick or treat thing, and people around here were not nice at all. <laughs> they were, they were displeased. Oh no! Did you get like people coming to your door, being like, "Excuse me, <laughs> what is this?" Oh no, we were sitting out front drinking. We had a playlist, oh. like a spooky playlist. <laughs> we're sitting there with our bourbon, saying to everyone, "Trick or treat!" Then we had a individually wrapped sweets in yeah. a basket hanging at the front, so kids didn't have to come near us. They could just grab them. Mm. But we had people running past, ushering their kids past, crossing the road. Oh, no. Um, so yeah. the front of, of at Halloween, you've got one of those atmosphere projectors. So oh, you can yeah. project, go from the front window and have those tombstones outside. So, yeah, we're going to piss yeah. people but off. But if you'd put <laughs> cute teddy bears up, everyone would have been like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's a shame, I guess, that people don't see the, the, the scare industry is actually quite it's loving and caring. This all yeah. care. It's not yeah. all like people going, "Oh yeah, I love to scare people because I hate people." It's not that, not at all. Yeah. It's like horror fans are the, the cuddliest buggers I know, mm. and you know they're not the violent ones, but it's, it's <laughs> yeah. So making this film, kind of like, what was your process? How did you get it up? first from the idea of it to the end product like what steps did you take um well, well once i picked up the gauntlet i yeah. was like i've got to do it now and i had every intention of doing it but it was really like i've just you know I, i've got to so i bought i had some film equipment um but anything i didn't have i bought so i bought a uh, 70 is that what it comes I'm, I'm awful with, with technology i direct stuff you know yeah. film 
I bought seven D, some LED lights, mm. some gels, some recording equipment. I actually, at the end of the documentary in the credits, I've listed what I got yeah. and where I got it from. So if anyone watches it and thinks, oh, well, I fancy doing a documentary, it's like, this is what I used. If you're oh, curious, cool. you know, oh, this amazing. is how cheap it is. And then I got a suitcase and then just traveled around. So the suitcase has my laptop in it. And all the equipment, all the sound equipment. And it literally, I was a one-man walking film studio. Oh, nice. Just travelled around, setting up interviews and filming stuff. Oh, that's cool. So did you, like, um, just, like, message people going, hey, can we film this thing? Or did you did you have anyone, like, coming to you about it? Um, no. I mean, there's a lot of, a few people were very wary. Oh. Like, like have you done this, have, have you done a documentary before? No. Mm. Have you got any films online? None are any good. <laughs> just, but, you know, I always said to everyone, I'll show it to you before you, it's released. You know, you've got a chance to say yay or nay to it. Yeah. And everyone who's seen it has gone, no, it's amazing. So, mm. but yeah, no, no one really, it was really the ones Andy put forward. I'm trying to think of anyone else. I don't think so. I think it's just the people he put forward. Some yeah. sort of said yes and um, changed their mind. Some I really want involved and just they didn't have the time, but they've been really supportive of it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but largely from that initial list, really, I can't think of anyone. Uh, he knows everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think he chose the ones that were more likely to be involved as well. Oh, that, yeah. that's good then. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going about it, did you, did you have any uh, issues making it at all? No, not really. Oh, um, it was just because the people who opened the doors mm. really opened the doors. Oh wow, that's fantastic! No, no yeah. one who full on said, no one who's, who said come down and film then gave me crap for it. Mm. Absolutely mm. no one. Yeah. And everyone was completely amazing. And then, I think British Farmer went down there like five times. But I actually followed them from I think when did I start it? I think I started it in November. Yeah. I know nothing. I'm chatting nonsense. I started in April and I followed them through October and just past October. So I mm. went down to there. Mm. So they were really, really accommodating. Um, Horrify Me just did a full on makeup shoot with me. Oh, um, wow. Anyone who's interested were really like, yeah, yeah, come down and experience this and try that and, you know, ask us anything and we'll answer anything. It's really, really cool. Oh, that's, that's wicked then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so did you have, uh, do you have a favourite part in your film uh, that you made? Like, this is the, the point where you go, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of this bit. I absolutely love that bit. I have the most cop-out answer in the world. I'm <laughs> super proud of this entire thing because yeah. it was such a labour of love. It was such a beautiful experience. It was happening where quite a lot of crappy things were going on in my personal life mm. so it was kind of a nice boost to get me through that as well and when it all came together and one of the best and the fact that everyone's loved it everyone I've seen everyone has shown it to and that's when I played it in America for its premiere at Horror Hound yeah to playing the South End and one of the best things I heard from it and it, it always sounds like I'm slagging about documentaries I'm not I've seen all the Horn documentaries I love them all so this isn't me saying this is this guy this guy said, do you know what I like about your documentary? He's an American guy. He said, I could show this to my mum. And she'd go, oh, I get it. Oh, like, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. What do you mean? He said, well, the fact is that there's so many documentaries about in America about hawks. Mm. And they're very supportive and they're very loving. But they're very, oh, you wacky Americans. So this one really humanises yeah. hawkers and what they do. And to me, that was, I was like, good. <laughs> that, that's that's what I wanted. I want people not to go all oh, you wacky Brits. Go wow, these talented bastards and yeah. the stuff yeah. they go through to entertain us. Like the, the, the I went for the makeup shoot at Horrify Me and it was horrible. <laughs> Amazing photos, but I was I, oh, I, <laughs> I, I was a bit tubby then. I'd draw him a belly button and oh, was, and I thought people do this night after night after night to scare us, to entertain us, and I think that's just because it's horror people are like oh it's crap it's not it's an art form it's mm. just as relevant yeah. as any other art form out there and that's really what i want people to take home from oh yeah that, that's so so true yeah. i've heard so many you know 
stories of the after like a week or two's run you've still got leftover makeup in areas that just won't go away for like a month <laughs> you know the the eyeliner the stuff around your eyes blood uh-huh. somewhere in your hair <laughs> it won't go away yep. that's that's I, so I, true i gotta say showering after any of our events um from being an infected i feel like i've been in a car crash oh god because the 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 bottom of the shower is just filled with blood and bit and oh yeah it just you have that moment where you're like yeah it's okay it's all fake it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah so, so remind us when is it when is your it coming out like when are we able to see it in the uk i've been told late september they okay. haven't actually given me a date yet because it's um oh, I don't even do not I don't even know the name of the company. They do they own a company called Chemical Burn, and apparently they're doing a new company that this is going to go under. Yeah. So, but but one if you follow the socials, I will be blasting all over it, and Scare yeah. Track will be blasting all over it as well. Fantastic. Uh, I've told them they get the exclusive when I get the release date. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> so they'll be proud to know. They've been such a massive. He's been yeah. such a massive yeah. supporter. He really has. He's been such a cheerleader for this. So I said, look, once. Once it gets to date, you'll be the first one to, to know about it. Yeah, that, that's weird. But, gonna... but late September, it'll be out in time for, for October then. Yeah. Are you going to look at holding sort of like a open air viewing um, for There was people, one at South you know? End, wasn't there? The horror festival uh, a little while back. Yeah, it played at South End. It, it's played a few festivals. I was, we were, I was actually trying to sort out um, a haunt experience with it. Oh. Where yeah. there's... It's really weird. You haven't seen it, have you? <laughs> okay. No, we've not seen it yet. Okay. There's kind of... Oh, I don't know about spoiling. There's kind of an, an odd story within it mm. um, that's to do with the end of the film, which I did, should it made me chuckle. Um, but, and I was kind of trying to do a horn based on that yeah. and the characters within the documentary, um, but it just didn't work. Uh, but it just didn't. The, the venues fell apart, and then I was going to try and do it at Broditch, but the amount they'd have to cost uh, the, the cost for hiring out and stuff to it just all oh, yeah, it didn't didn't work out. But yeah. we did uh, several things, and now COVID happened, you've buggered up everything really. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I would be if there's if there's any venues interested, I'd be very very interested in doing a yeah, that'd doing be a big, have a big open air because everything else is so clandestine that had to do like a because it was official premieres in America so I had to do a pre-premiere screening mm. in up north and then so yeah, yeah so I wouldn't mind doing a, a big Halloween one I think that'd be amazing yeah that that would be really cool that'd be cool as well um so you mentioned that um it, it's with this company how did you get it uh like picked up by them like how did you um was it sold to them like how about no how in all fairness I just bugged everyone Mm. I thought that during lockdown, I thought no one's making anything. This is the perfect time. And most people just didn't give out. Most people didn't give the monkeys. Mm. Um, and the fact is, it, it is very independent. I mean, it's literally, there's a shot in there because for the Horrify Me, I had to get my mate to film bits yeah. because I was getting made up so I couldn't film it. So he took a shot of me walking down the station with a backpack and a suitcase. That was literally what I was doing for the entire documentary. It was just travelling yeah. around this thing. So... It is very independent. The part of the the vlog style found footage thing was part artistic design, part I had no goddamn choice. Mm. Like all the other angles you see were me. I'd finished the filming, I ran upstairs, went, right, got my camera phone, right, pretend like you're answering, and then just <laughs> dubbed over what they were saying. So it was, it's, it's a very, very independent looking film. So I can appreciate, especially its subject matter, that the bigger studios will come like, what's this? Yeah. But the people who've seen it, who like it get it and that's who he's really for and these guys got that i mean yeah okay we'll have that yeah that that's cool then and i guess it, it makes it much less uh, I, I don't know like artificial it's more homely from the heart you know less yeah. staged in a sense yeah um so do you have any advice for filmmakers that want to make something especially coming out of uh, lockdown that you know have had this creative boost what would you say to them i think do it mm. I'm doing it as simple as that. I mean, I, to, to, um, there are, there are, there, I'm actually going to see a feature film tomorrow, which I think was produced by David Arquette and has the guy who from Stranger Things 3 who worked in the ice cream parlour. Um, it's called Spree. Yeah. All shot on iPhones and GoPros. 
Oh, wow. My next feature film that I'm doing with a, a producer called Stuart Brennan, all going to be shot on iPhones. You can do it. But there's literally films that have won awards that have been shot on iPhone. Oh, we, wow. We live in such a sort of double-edged sword because it's kind of saturated. Everyone can do it, but everyone can do it. So if you've got the yeah. mat and rise above it and get noticed, you can do. You yeah. just need to... I mean, literally, I did this documentary off my back mm. because I wanted to the suitcase. It is doable. It yeah. really is. You've just got to get the drive and do it. Yeah. Get it made. Yeah, that, that's so true. I guess it, at the end of the day, it all boils down to just if you've had the determination to do it, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we yeah. have a Was question. There... For... Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Was there anything from this film that you learned that you'd like, you're going to be using those skills or that sort of know-how now to put into your next film? Yes. Um, well, I think I'm, I'm a found footage whore. I love it. I think there are a lot of bad found footage films, so they get quite a bad rep. But yeah. I think the medium of found footage is becoming more relevant as we move on to like mm-hmm. this podcast, for example. Yeah. Um, you know, TikTok, they're all, they're all these ones are getting bigger, which are essentially found footage. Yeah. Um, so what, and that's what I tried to put in my last film. Um, and it was, it kind of works, I think, but yeah, you know, side point, I threw it in this one. Yeah. And I was just, I was doing all these stupid angles and putting people out of focus and faking CCTV. I mean, there's so many CCTV shots. They're not, there's me balancing in the corner like that, going, oh, oh that, that, that's in shot, that's in shot. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, there's, I've learned a lot which again it's why i say i'm proud of all of it it's not just to cop out this as an artistic outburst and experimentation and just love and the love i got back as well mm. has just made it such a massively fun experience but yeah but part of that is playing we found footage so much playing with angles playing with styles and a lot of that is going to be brought on to my next film oh that, that's wicked then awesome. and, and every time you keep speaking about it i'm getting more and more excited to see it um uh, so i have a question uh from one of our audience members um he asked how would you uh, would you do anything differently looking back at it now no because it's there's the the, the japanese i think it's japanese potters have a theory called the beautiful mistake yeah. And um, the logic is you can create a pot a thousand times. You create one with a weird dent, that then becomes beautiful because it's different. Yeah. And um, because you can't control it, it just happened. And this documentary just happened. Now, I did try and get backers for it to start with, mm-hmm. but very, very quickly, the backers started pissing me around the same way the backers pissed me around in the last one. And I just went, no, do not. I'm going to do this all myself. Whatever yeah. happened with this documentary happened because it made what it is and what it is I love. Mm-hmm. So I would, some people said, oh, well, maybe you did some more research. I didn't want to do more research. The, what happened was magical and I, I wouldn't want to change any yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there anything that you came across that you learn um, through sort of all your interviews and everything that really either shocked you or just amazed you about the industry that you didn't know before? Um. Well, I knew nothing about the industry. <laughs> that, that's the thing I really... When Andy was like, oh, there's loads of haunts in Newcastle. I said, like, yeah, there's tons of them. I was like, where? <laughs> he went, well, there's Broadditch and there's Faces Ventures and blah, blah, And oh, and Scare Track does a podcast on them. I was like, what, 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 how, how, where, when? So everything was new to me. Because all I knew was the American ones. And because I don't live in them. Yeah. I'm lucky enough to go out there a lot mm. over Halloween. But I... Yeah, so everything was new. The 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 faces ventures one really blew my mind. Mm. I mean, really, they just there's a story in there which just I've showed it at screening at people in tears. Oh wow! And again, it's the ones with the worst reputation. It's the the, the you know savages, the awful taste savages who do blah blah blah. They they they're not man. They really blew me sideways. Mm. That's that's really cool then um so uh, i've noticed you've done a couple scare track episodes um including you did cursed in essex at some point as well mm-hmm. um from doing these experiences what do you reckon makes a good like attraction what kind of sells it for you mm. 
uh, inventiveness and heart, I think. Yeah. I like uh, the time where I was in Brodich and the scarrots made me jump. Oh, you fucker. So he ran round and jumped in front of me. Oh, you fucker. So he used my reaction to him scaring me to scare me again. And I was mm. like, fair play. Fair play. <laughs> and that's, that's what makes the, the good attraction. That, that's, what make, that's what takes it away from all I knew things and attractions were the fairground rides where you have the crappy plastic skeleton. It's the heart that makes it. And if you've got heart putting into it, mm. you're making traction just that little bit different than the last one. That, you know, that bit more personal. It's these little tricks. That's really what it is. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that is so true. You know, putting... When, when, you can tell when something's put their heart into it. You can tell yeah. when it's all love, which is really what does make it special. Um, yeah. So just a uh, final couple of questions, unless we have some more from our audience or from you guys. Um, obviously, the COVID has really messed up the scare industry, you know. Uh, it's taken a lot of attractions and uh, uh, events away to the, um, this year. Um, so do you reckon this film will help boost like um audience confidence warm their hearts to these scare attractions and you know uh help support uh scare attractions through this time and hopefully bring in audience members uh to them i really bloody hope so yeah <laughs> yeah so that's the point i mean, at the end of the documentary I, I do say go find more i mean there's only so much of a cover in a year you know i mean there's more out there I just mm. couldn't get to them or, you know, some, they be just mismatched times, but they're out there. So yeah, I hope people look at this and go, my God, England's really, really good at this. And then they'll start looking for yeah. Like listen to um, Scare Track, uh, go to the Scare Tour site and see which stuff is in your local area. I mean, you know, the, the, the resources are out there. Yeah. You just, I just didn't know about them. Someone that gave people, hey, look, you're awesome. Now go and check them out. Go to these ones, find a new ones new ones will be cropping up. So, yeah, I really hope it really fires people up. Yeah, yeah. Out of interest, I know you, do, you said you've been to American ones. Do you prefer the American or the the English scare attractions? Hmm. Tough question. Because I've <laughs> been to a couple, I've been to Halloween Horror Nights and stuff, and I've also done quite a lot in England. So I'm kind of on the same boat, like, they're very different. I find, I find, well, the, thing, I, the ones I've been to America are the big flashy ones. So I find the American ones, they kind of have the uh, uh, almost unfair advantage because they've got the pop culture money behind them. But as terms yeah. as are they as good, I'd say they're on par. Mm. And they yeah. are like, there's just, I've not been through an American one, which has scared me more than an English one. I think we're very, very level. Americans, I think they, the Americans have the advantage because they've, They've been doing this for decades. Mm. Um, my mum always said that, that when she got married in Halloween, she was like, Halloween just wasn't a thing. It was like 31st of October, it wasn't anything. Whereas oh, back no. then in America, yeah. that was still Halloween. So they've had decades more. But having mm. said that, in the short space of time England has been doing it, they're, they're on par with them. Mm. What, what we don't have is like British Farm doesn't have the money to go, oh, hey, Netflix, man, can we do a Stranger Things, mate? Mm. So therefore, they don't get the, the media attention because it's not Beetlejuice and Strange Things and Child's Play and this that and that. It's, you know, it's stuff they've had to build themselves. But yeah. as far as actual fun goes, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I was maybe going to America here. I'm more gutted because I like my Walmart trips and I love American junk food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But because it's cancelled, I was like, ah, suck it, man. We'll just, you know, I think the two weeks I was going to spend in America, I'll just hammer out all. Of in the UK yeah. rather than doing it before I go but then they'll bloody shut down and bugger up that plan mm. yeah <laughs> um, I mean there, there are a couple that are uh, thankfully still open I know a couple of places are holding off till uh, the end of September to figure out whether they can or not um, and speaking of which uh, on that line we we have Save Our Scares which is on Facebook um, it's where a load of people from the scare industry have come together to you know create the support for attractions uh you know figure out how we can open safely uh and hopefully just bring awareness to the fact that you know the leisure industry the scare industry the theater industry needs more support uh you know from the government as well to you know get that financial aid to keep us alive because at the end of the day 
you know, we you're quite right. You know, the attractions in the UK don't have loads and loads and loads and loads of money to, you know, do, you know, Netflix, Stranger Things ones. Um, and because it all just come from the heart, you know, it even it comes out of people's own pockets to build these things. Yeah. Um, so if you are able to, yeah, uh, Greg has just put in chat, hashtag Save Our Scares on Facebook. Do check it out. Um, and hopefully we can make a difference, especially coming up to this October. Um, but you did, you mentioned that they're, they're quite similar, American and UK haunts. Is there is there anything that that makes them different in a like a style of scares and in the way they do it, or would you say it is quite equal? I'd say it's, it's quite equal, really. Yeah, it, it's the same. England and America have the same mentality. Now, I've heard the Halloween Horror Nights in Japan is a different ball game. Oh, now because Ooh. culturally they're so different. Yeah. Um, I mean, apart from the fact that. Brits I know go over didn't speak Japanese. They said it was, e- it was even more terrifying. <laughs> but yeah, I think England and America have quite a similar mentality in terms of what scares us and the approaches. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I, I think they're... If, if, do you better, if you just... If you got an English guy and a Brit mm. just said, right, create your own horn and you put me through both of them, I, I probably couldn't tell which one. Oh, Unless maybe cool. one was like... More American themed in terms of I don't know like Hicks or something, and we had some tea room. I don't know, but yeah, um, but, yeah, but I, from go, I don't think I could tell the difference. I'd be quite interested if people can. Yeah. You know, if someone's like, no, don't be so stupid, Dan. Blah blah blah. Mm. I'd be, I'd be, yeah, very very interested because I do a lot of behind the, the screens tour at Universal. Yeah. But I think, um, that's one of the thing that got me interested in doing the documentary. I was like, oh my god, this is how they work. This is amazing. Mm. Um, from that alone. And being taken around behind the scenes in Broadwich, I was like, "Yeah, it's, it's the same mechanics, it's the same logic." Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Now I'm really interested. I think in the big t- difference is uh, obviously. Go ahead. Obviously, in America, the uh, they're all they're all licensed. Like Netflix have got a lot, like Resident Evil, for instance. But in England, it's all like I suppose we've got more original scares, like original ideas and concepts, which I think sometimes makes it a bit better if you don't know the full story. See, that's what I liked about um, Halloween Horror Night is in the Orlando one, they do half and half. Ah. And I think the original ones are always so much better. Mm. Because the other ones, it's yeah, like yeah. walking through a film. And it's like, yeah, it's my favourite film. But the original ones are scarier because you, you know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. There's more mystery to it, I guess. Yeah. You have no idea what to And expect. also, the other thing is, they, they, they're, they're mini films. Mm. So, mm. Broadwich Farm changes... There, I think it's the bunker changes every year, mm. and he said each year it's like a different story. So, so if you think about it, a scare attraction is like a living anthology. Yes. Which yeah. I really like, and that's why I like original stuff more because it's like oh, it's like watching a cool new film. Mm. Mm. I mean, uh, th- that's what we aim to do as well. We we have our own zombie universe where literally all of our events. There's a story that runs through all of them. There's characters you'll meet again. You know, they evolve through the events and stuff. And um, it, it's something I proper nerd out about. I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, th- what's this character doing in this one? Um, but, yeah, it, it's so true. They, I love uh, attractions that have a story to it. And I'm like, oh, gosh, like, w- what's happening now? Like, where are we going? Uh, what's this character? Oh, a character has returned that I know. And it's, it, it, that's my favourite bit about scare attractions like that but yeah, yeah. Oh, that uh, sounds really cool yeah yeah um so now we're gonna move on to uh our fantastic game by the one and only saz uh you can probably see the uh board we have mm-hmm. um so saz would you like to take it away so we have got the one and only one fateful night So it is one of those nights where it is full moon, the mist is lurking, it is one of those creepy ass nights where you just know something's going to happen. And it just so happens you've spent the entire week doing everything possible that you can to annoy and conjure dark forces. So you've been doing your Ouija boards, you've been doing some seances, Maybe you've watched a VHS tape or two and you have also been sending out, you know, just vibes and stuff. 
So you have now got somebody after you, but you don't know who is coming to get you before cool. you decide if you're going to run, fight, or hide from this person or being. So you're going to choose which you're going to do first. Then we're going to find out who is after you. And then we're going to find out what weapon you are going to get. Now, based on these choices and uh, fate's choice is what determines whether you survive the first attack or you die. So you can get one point or two, depending on if you completely KO the uh, character, you get two points. If you entertain me enough, you might get two points. Because uh, it's my game after all. And uh, also, if it's just the top thing you can do for that character, because not all of them can be killed, you get two points. If you just about survive, you can have one point. Otherwise, you're dead. And cool. uh, to then... those, those people who've uh, seen this game before, it's now got a new little twist. Uh, if you die during the night, uh, there's going to be a cool quick fire round and if you survive then dan will get to ask one of us whatever question he wants to ask so take it away Saz. okay brilliant so we're gonna have uh, aiden and dan play this we're gonna have uh, the lads head it out against each other would you like to go first dan or would you like to see how it's done by aiden uh, i'll go first okay would you like to run hide or fight All right i'm too unfit to run <laughs> I'm six foot four, so hiding's going to be a bit pain in the ass. Okay. I don't think I can fight, but I can definitely flail. Is that an option? <laughs> um, if you get the wet fish, flailing is definitely an option. Okay. okay. That is in there. So, yeah, we'll go, we'll go for a, a, a sort of fight then for you, Dan. <laughs> Which would you like to go for on this board? So you've got top row, middle row, bottom row. I'll go middle. Middle? And um, one, two, three, or four? Um, three, so I can't figure out what it is. <laughs> it says help. <laughs> ah. yeah. Oh, you have got Norman Bates after you. So that's not a bad one if you're yeah. playing. You don't yeah. just fight too much. Some of the things take shit out, get... be fine. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hope you get a fairly decent weapon, though. Yeah, good thing you not... have got a few things on there that won't help you at all good thing you're not hiding in the shower that's that's a yeah. definitely good one yeah definitely a good one right let's go for it you have got a wooden stake oh nice. that that's good yeah See, how would you use it i'd like to know so i thought wooden steak as in a bit of meat made of wood <laughs> confusing for a second <laughs> No, that wouldn't be as helpful. No, we're talking like <laughs> a Dracula it. kind of wooden state. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe if he's a vegan, he'll like run off. <laughs> so what? Do how, you... how are you? How are you going to use that? What are you going to do with it? Just to sort of got an idea. She likes being convinced. Right. <laughs> and well, then convincing how good your flailing's going to be. I think I genuinely wear quite baggy clothing, mm -hmm. so I'll quickly whip off my shirt. Hold it up there, put it back for a shower curtain, and me, me, me. And hopefully that will <laughs> yeah. confuse them enough. They'll be like, what is this guy's problem? And then maybe I can get a bit of a head start. Solid. I'll go with that. And you said you're quite tall, so you might just get him in the eye, and then that's and, it. Yeah. Well, done. he's quite, I think he's the same height. I'm six, same height. I'm going to figure that out. Guy, isn't yeah, I think you can get him in the eye. Six Are you looking one. that up? He's six foot one. Ah, I'm, I've got three inches on him. Boom. Well, there you go. There you go. Right. Perfect eye I'm height. pretty convinced that you've managed to stab him in the eye. Cool. And that's him KO'd for us. So you've that's got... two points for you. You've got nice. another night to survive yet. Rightio, Aiden. Aiden, what are we going to go for? Is Aiden alive? I think Aiden might have frozen. <laughs> Perfect. Well, guess who's going to step into the role of Aiden? Hello, it's me, Aiden. Hello. <laughs> what would you like to go for? Run, fight or hide? I'm going to run. And what row would you like to go for? One, two or three? 
Um, could I go for the um, bottom heart, please? Bottom heart? Okie dokie. You have got a zombie! Perfect coincidence. There we go. It's working. Sorry, my pros. <laughs> oh, Mr. Robot, robot has returned. At least he's come back alive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm glad. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, Aiden, so you're you're running from a zombie and let's see I'm, what you're okay, gonna get. That's fine. <laughs> you have got a name and incantation. Oh not gonna do anything. No, that's but... not gonna do it, Chief. I always die in this game. It's all good. I always <laughs> die. It's fine. What is that? I I, I can see. No, Aiden, you've got you've you've had one point, surely. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty slow zombie that that looks like. There, I'm gonna go with. You both so, played it about a foot. <laughs> I think you get one point for oh, tonight, Aiden. That's kind. Because we're gonna go with the, the fact that you're you're a fast runner. Yeah, we'll go with that. Of course, 100%. <laughs> right, night two. Are we doing any questions? It's night two. He's got to survive the whole night. Okay, okay. Right, back to Dan. Would you oh, like gosh. to run, hide, or fight this time? Um, I, I did all right fighting last time. I'll go for that again. Yeah, of course you can. And what row would you like to go for? I'll go for... Top right. That's the one. Okay, that one. Yep. You have got Frankenfurter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Instead of now fight, my, you my just flirt outrageously. <laughs> you could. You could <laughs> flirt outrageously. Yeah, they'll, they'll do that. There's, there's also a sexy man that you could throw in front of him so that is an option okay. let's have a look a gun oh a gun will work you're fighting you've got a gun brilliant so that is, is two it the same two. gun they have at the end of rocky horror show the little fork thing it is any kind of gun you choose on that one because that has it has to cover uh, a few other people as well so any type of gun you want Cool. I'll go for the rocket. So you're two for two, so you have got four points. You have survived the entire night. Boom. Wow. And now that means... Fantastic. You get to ask any one of us a question, whatever question you may like. Oh, gosh. Um, tell me all about your scare, scare maze. Hell yeah. Um, well, uh, our scare attraction, uh, it, it, with zombie infection, we uh, run in multiple different venues. Uh, across the UK. We have events in Liverpool, Sheffield, York, which we're actually there this Friday, uh, Nottingham Forest. We have a workshop in Somerset. Uh, we have a complex in Basingstoke. And uh, I think that's it currently. But yeah, um, it's it's a two, uh, two hour uh, experience um where you're basically two two hours ish uh some are a little shorter some a little longer um go uh you're f led through a story by lead characters they could be you know special forces they could be rebels they could be news agent news agents photo journalists news reporters that one yeah <laughs> journalists yeah. um loads of different <laughs> characters lead you for a story uh and uh the common theme is zombies of course but they're all very different stories uh you know um it, it, it's it's real good fun you get your weapon systems you get to fight the infected um and at the end hopefully survive um, so yeah, and as I said before, running story throughout, so you sometimes get to meet the same characters twice, which is really cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, and where's the... Fun. 
Is, is the, all the details on your Picking brain site or is it? Well. Yeah, so uh, if you look down below uh, uh, on our stream, we have uh, the details on our website. You can check us out on Facebook, Zombie Infection, uh, Instagram and Twitter or go to our website, uh, www.zombieinfection.co.uk. That is our website there. Um, and you can find all the information there, including, uh, uh, you know, how we're opening in uh, with social distancing and everything in place. Uh, so if you have any concerns about that, it's there on the website. But yeah. Have you got COVID zombies? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> we do not. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely no COVID zombies. That would be terrifying, uh, even more so. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. It's been cool. Yeah, it's been really, really wicked. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope... You've had a fantastic time. Um, yeah, it's been good. Wicked. And uh, we can, if you follow UK Haunters on Facebook, you said all the details about when it's going to be out is going to be posted there. Yep. And Instagram. Yep. Well. Instagram. Cool. Uh, when we upload this uh, uh, episode to YouTube, we'll post all the links there so you guys can cool. go and have a look. But yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs>